We love getting your questions, so we want you to keep them coming via Facebook, Twitter, and on our webpage. Who knows, we might just answer your question here in the studio audience next. Welcome back. Our special guest today is actor Isai Morales, and we're chatting with Derry, who made national headlines when a stranger attacked her with sulfuric acid nearly four years ago. Derry, I want you to tell us how this attack has kept you away from your family. Well, I, I fled Arizona and I moved here. And Can I ask uh, why here, of all places? It was just uh, the, this guy that I was dating at the time, he was out here and he was like, come stay with me and my roommates, that way you can drive back and forth. Because I was in Boston with my brother and it was just difficult. She has children though and grandchildren. How old are they? Yeah. Uh, oh, my kids are uh, 26, 24, 22, 20, and 15. Unbelievable. I have a three-year-old, but oh. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and my grandkids are five and one. Oh, wow. so, and I have one on the way, too, another one. On busy. Well, I'm going to ask this question, and it's going to be a tough one, because I know trauma, and I know where it sits in the brain. Okay. So I understand you're kind of in a survival place. Yeah. But it also begs the question, especially since you're here kind of following a professional dream and your kids are back there, right. what part of you coming out here, what percentage of it could you put on fear of your attacker and not being resolved versus you chasing your dream? When I came out here, 100% fear for what happened to me and what, and I was afraid that they, they didn't get the job done, so to speak, and that maybe they would try something else or something worse. And it wasn't until, because I was a stay-at-home mom before this happened, and then I'm still afraid to go back there. I, and that's, that's the question, because I don't think, what's, what, what, how old is your youngest? She's 15. 15. So do you have a desire to go back? I have a desire to be with my children. Yeah. So, yeah. So if I could get them to come here, <laughs> that would be my ideal situation. Because I, I don't really want to go back there, no. And right. the not wanting to go back, that's just what I want to get clear on. And I think your, your tears are telling me the story. That it, when, when you even think about going back, that attack feels like today. Yes. But even more so being torn. I mean, as a mother, nothing could keep me from my babies. Yeah. I get that. It's difficult. I guess the question I have is, does this case need to be resolved in order for you to reunite with your children? I feel like that would be a big help if it, if I knew who did this and maybe if they weren't out and about, I would probably feel a lot better about going back. Maybe I could, I could deal with the other, the emotional stuff of driving past. My kids live very close to where it happened and, you know, I have to drive past there all the time to go to my daughter's apartment and, you know, maybe I could just get past those things if I knew the person who did it was but you know not like out there. These are excuses, and I want to get to what's real. Mm. I want to get to why you are divided, why you are still here, and your babies and your grandkids are still there. It is a, either I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do this. What are you holding back from in making that decision? I don't know. I just, I just, I just keep shoving it under the rug and trying to ignore it. And, and like, next thing I know, it's three and a half years later when it feels like it was just yesterday. But. And another three years from now, <laughs> your child is going to be 18. Yeah. You will have lost all of this time. We've and already lost three and a half years yeah. without your kids. That's why I, I need to figure out how to get past it. So I can go back, I guess. So the fear is that, I, I see her fear as not wanting to put herself back in the situation. But she goes. It. She goes to visit. Yeah, but it's a limited thing. It's, it's different mm -hmm. than. It's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. But it's different than laying awake. I pretend like it is, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stay, yeah. stay, stay with that. Yeah. This is going to open the door for us to be able to help you. Right. You pretend like it's okay, but I want you not to pretend for just a moment. You're in a safe place. You're not there. You're right here with us. Tell us about the piece that's not okay. It was like when I heard the call, it just took me like right back to that day. And a lot of times when I'm there, it just feels like so... It's terrifying. It, I just feel it all over again, and I just try to push it down and hide it and just be there and enjoy my kids, but it's still really painful. 
And what we know about trauma, especially the people who've been perpetrated and or attacked, is that as long as that stays out here unresolved, there's part of you that will never feel resolved at all. Yeah. You, the threat still exists. Even if there's no threat, it still exists to you because we don't know what's happening over here. Unfortunately, chasing this part will, won't bring you any relief. And I hope for you more than anything that we find justice for whoever the animal is that did this to you. That would make me as happy as it would you. But right now, I'm more, we don't, that's out there and you're yeah. here. And I'm interested in you and finding you the healing that you need. And I do feel like we need to rewire your brain. How Keep, do we do that? <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's the right This question. is the first step. Being That's here, right I think, question. is definitely a first step. Well, the first thing you need to know is you don't do it alone. We're going to need to get you some professional help. And that's that lean in, the way you just looked in and said, that's the first time I really thought she wants this. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I really want you to want this. Because out here, all you do is box up and wall in your feelings and pretend as if it's not happening. You've let us in. The walls are down. Now I want you to commit to what we're going to offer you. Yeah. There is a one-week program that's called Onsite. And they do intense trauma work seven days and it's about a year's worth of, of uh, outpatient treatment in one week. Oh wow. Okay. It sounds like a lot and yeah, it is. It's it intense. Is. It is. Okay. But you deserve it. These are really, really caring people. Top-notch trauma professionals in the country come and do this thing. Uh, but more than anything, it's one of the safest places on the planet. Mm -hmm. And so you won't ever feel loved and safe like you do here. But I believe it's time for you to get this gift that you deserve so that you can show up as a mom again and a human being again. And Will you be willing to accept it? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We want that Thank for you. you. Definitely. We want that for you. We're going to give you the opportunity and we're going to support and join you on that journey. So you deserve a big hand for what you've done. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. We'll be right back after this. I was, I was, I was beaten a lot as a child, but where we grew up, that was all couched for our own good. And I respect some of that. There's a place for, for, for stern parenting, but there's no place for out and out abuse. We love getting your questions, so we want you to keep them coming via Facebook, Twitter, and on our webpage. Who knows, we might just answer your question here in the studio audience next.